Ever wish you could ditch those tedious tasks, the ones that feel like they take forever, you know, free up some mental space for the more interesting stuff? Oh, absolutely. We've all been there staring at spreadsheets <laughs> for hours on end. Wouldn't it be great if we could just like automate some of that away? Exactly. And that's where Python comes in. It's like having a trusty sidekick for all things data. It really is. Python is incredibly versatile. You can use it for data analysis, automation, even building simulations. And the best part? You don't need to be a coding whiz to harness its power. Right. And that's what's so great about this Udemy course we're diving into today, taught by Harry Monroe. He's also known as the simulation guy. The simulation guy. I like the sound of that. What's his background? He's got some serious real-world experience. We're talking projects for the Ministry of Defense, even modeling the London underground system. Wow, that's impressive. So he's not just talking theory. He's actually applied this stuff to some pretty complex problems. Exactly. And that's what makes his approach to teaching Python so refreshing. He ditches the abstract stuff and jumps right into practical applications. So it's all about giving you tangible skills that you can use right away, right? Absolutely. Like, imagine yourself analyzing environmental data to pinpoint pollution hotspots. Or say you're a civil engineer and you need to model stress points on a bridge before you even start building. Exactly. Those are just a couple of examples. Okay, that makes sense. But let's unpack this a bit. How does Harry actually get you up to speed with Python, especially if you're starting from scratch? Well, he starts with the fundamentals, using a beginner-friendly platform called Thonny. Mm -hmm. Don't let that fool you, though. Even seasoned engineers can benefit from revisiting the basics. True. It's always good to have a refresher. So what comes after that? He dives into variables, which are essentially the building blocks of any programming language. So it's like making sure your toolbox is fully stocked before you start build right. You need to know what each tool is and how to use it. Precisely. And then there's the order of operations. You might have heard it called BIDMES. Ah, yes, BIDMES brings back memories from math class. It might seem like a small detail, but even experienced professionals can trick up on this. And in fields like engineering or finance, one small error can have big consequences. You're telling me it's like if you don't follow the blueprint correctly when you're building something, the whole project could be a disaster. So Harry really emphasizes getting those calculations right from the start. Absolutely. He makes sure you have a really solid understanding of how Python handles calculations so you can write reliable code and trust your results. Mm. It's all about building that strong foundation so you can move on to those more complex tasks with confidence. So we've got our blueprints, our tools. Now we need to talk about the materials. Like in the Python world, what are we actually working with? Right. We need data. And that data comes in different types. It's like, you know, you wouldn't use wood to build a bridge and you wouldn't use an integer to store a temperature reading. Each type has its purpose. That's a good analogy. So walk me through the different data types in Python. What are we working with here? Well, you've got your integers, which are your whole numbers. Like if you're counting the number of sensors in a network, then there are floats. Floats, okay. Those allow for decimals, so they're essential for measurements like voltage or pressure, where that precision is key. Makes sense. So integers for counting, floats for those super precise measurements. What else? And you can't forget about strings. Those are like labels or identifiers. Yeah. Think project names, material types, all those descriptive elements. Ah, uh, strings. Right, right. So Harry, he explains all these different data types in a way that even someone who's never coded before can grasp. Absolutely. He makes it super clear how crucial understanding these types is for working effectively with Python. It's like you need the right materials for the job, right? Exactly. Now, once you've got a handle on data types, Harry introduces some of Python's real heavy hitters, starting with NumPy. Okay, so tell me more about NumPy. Why is it such a big deal in the Python world? Imagine you're trying to analyze sensor data from, say, a wind farm with thousands of readings coming in every second. Traditional methods would just choke on that much data. Oh, yeah, I can see that being a problem. Too much data, system overload. Exactly. But NumPy handles it with ease. It uses these things called arrays, which are like turbocharged lists specifically designed for numerical operations. And the best part, NumPy can do calculations on entire arrays super fast. I'm talking 10 to 1,000 times faster than traditional methods. Wow, that's incredibly fast. But it's one thing to crunch numbers quickly, and another thing entirely to actually make sense of it all. Right, that's where Pandas comes in. Think of Pandas as the ultimate data organizer. Okay, so if NumPy is the engine, Pandas is like the steering wheel and dashboard. Perfect analogy. 
It takes raw data, often in those CSV files you see in engineering and science, and transforms it into these neat tables called data frames. Data frames? Are those kind of like spreadsheets on steroids? You got it. And the real beauty of Pandas is how easy it makes exploring and working with your data. Okay, so walk me through this exploration. What can you actually do with Pandas? Well, for starters, you can use the head function to glance at your data uh -huh. or info to check data types and if anything's missing. And describe, that gives you those handy descriptive stats like the mean, standard deviation, all those good things. So it's like having a whole team of analysts at your fingertips, ready to summarize and dissect your data on command. Precisely. And that's just scratching the surface of what Pandas can do. So we've used NumPy to crunch the numbers, then we organized it all with Pandas. Now for the fun part, finding those insights that can really make a difference, it's like the data is trying to tell us a story, right? Yeah. Exactly. And Python's got the tools we need to figure it all out. Like wow. we can calculate the mean, median, mode, that sort of thing. Right. To understand the patterns or things clustered together yeah. or really spread out. Are there any weird readings that stand out? Exactly. Those outliers could be a sign of something bigger. Then there's variance and standard deviation showing how much the data fluctuates. Oh, so it's like Knowing the average temperature is useful, but knowing how much it swings up and down during the day, that's a whole other level of insight. Could mean there's an issue that needs fixing. Absolutely. And this is where visuals come in handy, which is where Seaborn comes in. Ah, Seaborn. Turning numbers into eye candy. I like it. It's a game changer. Imagine. You take all those complex statistics, turn them into graphs and charts. Suddenly, trends jump out. Outliers are obvious. Those aha moments happen way more often. It's like instead of just reading a description of something, you get to actually see it. Much easier to understand. You got it. Seaborn's got all sorts of options. Simple yeah. scatter plots, histograms, even fancy ones like box plots and violin plots. Whatever you need. Pretty powerful stuff. So we've analyzed our data. We can visualize it, spot patterns. What's the grand finale? How does this all come together in a real-world scenario? Well, in the last lesson, Harry shows you how to build a system to keep an eye on industrial equipment. He uses simulated sensor data, showing how to apply everything we've learned to catch problems in real time. So, like, imagine you're in charge of a bunch of wind turbines. You've got sensors on everything, monitoring vibrations, wind speed, how much energy they're producing. This system Harry teaches, it's like having a 24-7 watchdog, analyzing that data, looking for any hint of trouble. Great analogy. And you can set it up to work for your specific needs. You decide the limits for different things. You get an alert if, say, a bearing gets too hot or if there's too much vibration. So it's not just about understanding the data, but using that knowledge to prevent problems before they happen, keep things running smoothly, and make better decisions. Exactly. That's what makes this course so valuable. It gives you the skills to take your data analysis to the next level, no matter what your background is. There you have it. We took a deep dive into the world of Python, specifically for busy professionals, learned how to go from zero to hero, from the fundamentals to using powerful libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Seaborn, to building real-world applications that can save you time, money, and maybe even a few headaches along the way. And as you start exploring Python yourself, think about what might be hidden in your own data. You never know what you might find.